Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now this might not seem like the most obvious place to have an opening piece to camera in a show about electric vehicles and the future of energy, but I think it is entirely appropriate because the peace, tranquility and stunning natural beauty of my Cotswold garden was shattered last week when a load of blokes turned up in a truck. They started putting up scaffolding in front of my office. Why? What on earth was I going to do? Make yet another extension on my enormous mansion? Because the following day, a load of blue vans turned up from British Gas. What were they going to do? Install a massive gas tank on my roof? No, they were here to install these. First of all, they fitted the mounting brackets. The installers were very careful. The panels don't lie directly on your roof tiles. They're supported by brackets attached to the roof truss timbers. Then the actual panels are attached to the brackets. The whole setup was installed in one day. The wires from the panels were run into the garage where they're converted from DC to AC in the inverter. That's the red box. By the end of the day, it was ready to turn on for the first time. And after a couple of hours, it had generated six kilowatt hours of electricity. Well, that's enough to run the washing machine, the fridge freezer, a couple of computers and the immersion heater, all for nothing. So this is a micro generation system. It means that a good proportion of our electricity consumption will be completely financially free and completely carbon free for at least the next 20 years. But that's not all, because this electricity also goes somewhere else. It goes into this pod and through this pod into this car. Now this is the Nissan LEAF. It's a 100% electric car. And it is possible on a bright, sunny, clear day with blue skies, a bit like today, to recharge this car's 24 kilowatt hour battery with solar power. That gives it a range of 100 miles. Think about it for a moment. It's possible, I'm not saying it's gonna be very frequent in this country, but it's possible to drive this car for 100 miles without burning anything. I'm talking coal, oil, gas, nuclear fuel, nothing. You burn nothing and you can drive 100 miles. But over the lifetime of the solar panels, around 20 years, there's no question that a setup like this will save you literally thousands of pounds, even in the dull grey United Kingdom. Installations like solar panels can provide your home with free, renewable electricity, but they can also provide an income thanks to the feed-in tariff. This can add up to over £1,200 a year. With around 700,000 homes expected to have solar panels fitted by 2020, it's very clear that this technology can have a really big impact. In Germany, there is already a huge uptake of micro-generation. They produce 20% of their total power needs with renewable energy. In purely financial terms, that is a saving of billions of euros every year and is a huge benefit to the whole country. So the big question is, is it really worth the bother? I mean, the installation, the same as I've got on my roof, would cost over £10,000 to install. Uh, that includes putting it on the roof and wiring it in and all that stuff, but that's a lot of money. And are you going to earn that money back in the electricity you generate in the first 10 days? No, quite simply, you're not. It's going to take years, literally about two and a half to three years uh, for you to earn that money back from the feed-in tariff because you've got to remember that you get 42.3 pence per kilowatt hour uh, from for, for every kilowatt hour you generate regardless of whether you use it or not in your home this is the really confusing thing it is quite complicated so you're generating electricity from the solar panels it's going into your house and through that into the national grid and for every kilowatt hour you produce you get paid 42.3p. I think I've got that figure right. Um, the way that you can keep tabs on this, and I'm a little bit obsessed at the moment, is by using this solar-powered Sunny Boy. This is called the Sunny Beam, not Sunny Boy, Sunny Beam. And it is a, a little gizmo that uh, reads, that gets the reading from the meter and the inverter in, uh, that's in my garage. At the moment, I'm producing 2.5 kilowatt hours of electricity because it's very sunny. My total today is 8.62 kilowatt hours and my total grand grand total that I've ever done since we've had the solar panels on the roof which is now nine days is 112.12 .12 
kilowatt hours. Now, if you think of it purely in car terms, the uh, battery in the Nissan Leaf is 24 kilowatt hours. So if you're very generous and say it doesn't quite do 100 miles on, on, a, on, on uh, 24 kilowatt hours, it does sort of 90. So you put 24s into 100 and you get about four and a bit. And let, let's say, for the sake of argument, 400 miles, really for nothing. I mean, it's very hard to argue, isn't it? Because the car's expensive, the solar panels are expensive, but they're not as expensive as a massive international global oil company that gets subsidies from our government. And that's about all I've got to say about the whole thing. I'll see you soon.